speed. That one degree will be four or five degrees before your time on this planet is done. And there is no reason to think, none at all, that our civilization <coughs> will hopefully change on that scale. The team at Stanford and the University of Washington last year published a series of papers about what will happen to grain yields in the period ahead. Forget the drought, forget the flood that have both become more endemic across this planet. Simply the rise in temperature as it takes grains, our great birthright, this cereal on back of which civilization is built as it takes it out of the range that it knew during the Holocene. We can expect at this point each degree increase in global average temperature to cut grain yields about 10%. Try to imagine this planet, 10, 20, 30, 40%. Perfect. 
that they had in their reserves. That is, ready to go, identified, mapped, known, declared to the SEC. Um, um, um. That number was 2,795, five times as much as the most conservative governments think it would be wise to put in the atmosphere, but it will be put into the atmosphere unless we figure out how to stop them from doing it. This coal and gas and oil is below ground at the moment, physically, but economically it's above ground. It's what's setting share prices, what people are borrowing money against. It is, it is our future <coughs> staring us in the face. And not only do we have that inventory of 2,795 <coughs> but the companies that require it are busy every day looking for more. Finding new ways to go to the tar sands or drill deep beneath the Gulf of Mexico or frack the shale of the east. All in an effort to get more carbon than it would be crazy, crazy ever to Let me give you an analogy. The two degrees, if you want, is kind of like the legal limit for drinking and driving. 08 in this state, thanks. It's not a good idea to go to 0.79 and drive, okay, but it's legal to do it. That's the limit that we have set. And the 565 gigatons is sort of like how much you might be able to get away with drinking. Maybe if you're my size and you take it slowly and you eat a meal, it's possible that you could get through a six pack in the course of an evening and still be sober enough to drive. I do not recommend it. <laughs> but it's within the realm of possibility. <clears throat> Fossil fuel industry has cracked open and has on the table five six packs ready to go for everybody tonight. Now, it is theoretically possible you may know somebody on the rugby team who would be willing to take a chance that. <laughs> and it's even possible that you get it down with think of the words we would use to describe their condition were they to try. They would be polluted, wrecked, wasted, total, wrecked. <laughs> that is what our planet will be, and it will not last a few days, it will last through geologic time. We need to figure out ways to take away, not the driving license, but you might call the social license of the fossil fuel industry <coughs> to pursue that path. It will not be easy. They're the richest industry on the planet. Exxon made more money last year than this company in the history of money. <coughs> and they continue to search constantly for more and more and more. And they do it in a spirit of um, arrogant certainty that no one will ever stop them. Earlier this year, Rex Tillerson, the CEO of Exxon, gave a speech at the Council on Foreign Relations in which he said, yes, it is true that global warming is real. Forget the things my company has been saying for many years, but it is an engineering problem with engineering solutions. Ask what one of those might be. He said, if we find that we need to move the planet's crop production areas, then we will. Crop production areas are what many of us refer to out of it as farms. And in this case, in this case, there is no place to move them. If one renders it too hot in Iowa to grow corn as it was this year, then you cannot simply transplant that operation to the tundra that the fossil fuel industry has nicely melted on our behalf. There is no topsoil up there to do it.
They should heed the warnings that have been given for a quarter century now by the unanimous or near unanimous declaration of our scientific bodies and our great universities. <coughs> instead, instead, the political system has failed and failed signally. We have seen a 20 year bipartisan effort to accomplish nothing, and it has exceeded, succeeded flaws. Why is that? It is because of the extreme power of the fossil fuel industry to win those fights in Washington almost without trying. Some of you saw the big story in the New York Times on Friday, which concerned the fact that this year, as every year, the fossil fuel industry would be the largest contributor to our food. That ability to prevent change from happening, that <laughs> ability is what drives us to have to think in new ways about how we are going to deal with this problem. Now, all of us are implicated in some way in this crisis. All of us are fossil fuel. But most of us would be as happy with energy coming from some other source, perhaps happier. Then that share price will begin to waver. The 
brand <laughs> reputation of this company will start to take a hit. That social license won't be renewed in quite the same way. I say this with some confidence, more confidence than I actually feel. It will be a very difficult fight, but there is historical precedent. Once before, in recent time, people were able to use this tool to good effect. That was a quarter century ago on campuses around the country. <coughs> students decided that it was no longer okay for them to be having their education paid for by investments in companies that profited from apartheid in South Africa. And so students rose up and demanded that investment, and in many places it worked, not every place. It did not work every Yale did not divest, despite the best efforts of students, 322 of them were arrested. Students built a shanty town in the middle of the campus <coughs> to demonstrate what conditions were like. And an alumnus came and burned the shanty town down. It was a source of strife. It was not easy. This will not be easy. It will be full of discord and controversy. But you know what? Taken together, including those actions at Yale, which of course were all over the press, it had its effect when Nelson Mandela was released from prison on Robben Island, the first trip, the first overseas trip that that great man took was to that station. He did not go first to the White House, he did not go first to the State Department, he went first to some of those college campuses where people had done that work. And he said, we freed ourselves in South Africa, but we could not have done it without you too. One of my graduates, one of the people we've worked hard with in our fight at 350.org, one of Mandela's great co conspirators, <coughs> Desmond Tutu, um, sent us the Anglican Archbishop of the Anglican Archbishop of South Africa, um, sent us a video a couple of days ago, a beautiful and moving one. I wish I could show it to you, in which he simply said, This now is the great moral issue of our time. This is I was a generation ago. Corporations are not able to hear moral arguments, but they are able to feel pressure. And so it is important to find that pressure. And in this case, in this case, it will not just be your sympathies that should be excited. In this case, it should be even easier because along with your moral sympathies, also your own instincts for so, you have 60 years more on this planet, maybe 70. That's a long time on a planet degrading in the ways that I have described. It makes no sense, no moral sense, and no practical sense to pay for your education with the investments in companies whose business plan guarantees you will not have a planet in which you carry out that education. And so, and the 
Kendall Goodrell said, I forgot. <laughs> and in the end, this debate is mostly between human beings on the one side and physics and chemistry on the other. And I submit to you that that is a very difficult debate, even for the powerful debaters of this union. Most significant question that human beings 